All right, Alabama-Auburn. Alabama wins 24-22 to in four overtimes. The post-game win expectancy was actually Alabama 93%, which some people might find surprising. But as bad as Alabama was on offense in the first half, Auburn was even worse in the second half. You look at total yardage on the ball, like the whole ball game. Alabama 381 yards, Auburn 159 total yards. Uh, 137 passing for Auburn, 22 rushing for Auburn. Yards per play, Auburn 2.4, Alabama 4.3. Alabama just started rolling late. Just absolutely rolled them late. Sack adjusted rushing yards, Alabama 101, Auburn 68. This was uh this was an incredibly gross game that I did not enjoy watching. I hate this Alabama football team and yet uh, it's it's been one of the more enjoyable seasons as far as we like being able to watch games, right? Because I enjoy the blowouts because I watch every play for what it is, right? But when you get a season like this for casual fans and and whatnot that that just want to see exciting football, that's what this is. Alabama's not a very good football team, and Auburn proved that. Uh, Derek Mason, what he did in that first half against Bryce Young and against that offensive line was genius. And it, it, maybe it wasn't even genius. It's just he used his common sense. Like, okay, he's not very good when you pressure him. Like, it, or at least when you bring pressure from both sides, right? When you don't give him an escape route, He's got nowhere to go. He can't get rid of the football because that offensive line can't block me and you, Chris. That, that Alabama offensive line is terrible. And on the other side, Auburn, without their quarterback, without their kicker, had a bunch of injuries just all season long. Things have not gone well. And they put up an incredible performance in this ballgame. It was a lot of fun to watch. I want to get your thoughts on what you were able to see once you got back in town because the first half was rough. I mean, it was rough, man. Well, the the best hire in the SEC this offseason was was not a head coach. It was Derek Mason's DC hire at Auburn. That that's the single best hire in the SEC this year. Yes. Yes. And I I, I what he did was great. Uh Auburn's offense is obviously inept, completely inept. I, I use the word cathedral to talk about the people that run this sport and basically run the SEC because they run the sport. It all goes through them. And and they do what they do, which is they find ways to justify propping up Alabama. Bama, I know you hate hearing this. Bama gets every call. And I know you thought the pass in, the, 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 the the roughing the passer call was bullshit. It wasn't. It was absolutely the letter of the rule. You cannot drive the player into the ground. That's he an made NFL no rule. attempt. That's with you. They're, um, they, but Gary, but, they caught, they've caught it in college football for five years. So you can say it's an NFL rule. They're calling it the same, and they didn't just start this year. They okay. didn't start last year. This kid has never, the kid that made that hit, has never played a college football snap in his life where that rule wasn't called. You cannot drive the player. He, did, he made no attempt whatsoever to pull up off him at all. So I don't like it just like you don't like it, but it's still a rule that has been called that way his entire college career. So he's either being taught, taught it or he just doesn't give a shit. Which, yeah, he just which, made a bad bad yeah. decision. So, yeah. so the, the face mask, which would absolutely have made a, a dicey kicker have to have a, a bigger kick and a bigger kick to, to take this thing, you know, in overtime, would have, would, have, would, have, would have been a big deal. I think Auburn lost this thing when they scored the touchdown in overtime. I said this, the second it happened, you have to go for two. You have to go for two. So, I know the rule is, is when you're at home, the other team has, no, 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 no. When you're overmatched and you're outmatched, you have to go for two. You have to win it or lose it on that one play. When we got into two-point conversion time, they got their first, their two-point play worked. Their two-point yeah. play was beautifully designed and beautifully executed. You go for two and you win the game right there, or you just lose it because you don't have the offensive ability to stop Alabama or to, to go tit for tat with Alabama from the two-yard line. Yes, okay, and you know, so I'm, and you I understand that. that. Yeah, no, I absolutely do know that. I think if it was from the twenty every time, the way the rule was the last couple of years, we're having a different conversation, right? But right. As soon as you know the new rules now, you cannot match them two point play for two point play. 
you, you're not, not, you're you're not wrong build. about that. Uh, the penalty numbers, by the way, 11 penalties for Alabama for 129 yards, 7 but for But those Auburn are all pre-snap penalties that were legitimate penalties. You cannot, say, you cannot use that and say, well, it was an even-called game. You just can't. No, no. This I, I'm not saying it was even called. I'm saying that <laughs> Auburn got a ton of calls, and they do in Jordan Hare all the time, absolutely Auburn, all the time during the hour. All those calls, Gary. All those calls were pre-snap calls. So many of those were pre-snap calls. You that is not you can't them have getting calls. You can't have 129 yards in penalties on pre-snap calls. Like that. <laughs> did you not see it? Did you not see the, the the numbers? They talked about it on the game multiple times about how Alabama has not handled the noise very well at all. Look at all these yes, pre snap there were, penalties. There were a ton of those. Yes, absolutely. Yes. But the big calls absolutely went. So also non calls. There were a ton of non calls. Either way, regardless of all of that, the going for two situation. None of this would have would have necessarily mattered had Tank Bigsby not gone out of bounds. On that that's drive right, right before that Alabama, correct. right? That so correct. that's correct. So I did write Auburn, down Auburn. Auburn lost this game just as much as Bama oh, yeah. came back to win it. Like they, I'll tell you this: today, tomorrow, and the rest of this week, the rest of this season, it, if if one talking head pundit speaks C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young's name for Heisman, they should be pushed into the nearest body of water they can find. All right. If one person votes for one of those kids over the other guys that have performed so much better than them, those two kids have everything given to them talent wise. And they did not come close to performing to what expectations were this year. If you get that, you lose your vote forever. I'm just done. I'm just done. (laughs) The the they Bryce Young thing that at all Bryce Young will get votes uh, partly because of minute thirty five left ninety seven yards to go all the no Alabama guys out. that are former Heisman guys they're all going to vote for him because that's what we do with this award that's why the award doesn't mean anything well, I'm anymore. talking about media members will vote for him because oh, he oh, went well, on no. a ninety seven yard drive with no timeouts left and threw a touchdown pass in the corner of the end zone to a freshman wide receiver like with he, the greatest offensive machine in college football right that well I wouldn't say that this year. Okay. I certainly would not okay. say that this year. All right, you, but, you're gonna you're gonna have you're gonna have three of those receivers probably go in the NFL in the first round. Well, what I mean, Jamison Williams was was out due to targeting early. Which again, you want to talk about peak Iron Bowl weirdness? Having the the top wide receiver on both sides of the field go out of the game disqualified for a targeting hit on a punt return. Which I mean, it was absolutely targeting, but it's like, man, what are we doing? The whole thing was just strange. Strange. Auburn, seven sacks in the game, and uh, all of them came early, right? Just dominated. They dictated the first three quarters of this ball game. Uh, this was this was interesting. I mean, just really the interesting. The reason I loved Michigan, the reason I loved Auburn in these games, plus the points, I didn't I didn't yeah. think they would win. I'm going to go out and say that. I didn't think they would win. I thought, I thought they could win. I didn't think they would win. The reason I loved them, plus the points, is both of these defenses pressure quarterbacks, and both these quarterbacks have shown if you pressure them, they're not good. They are great when they have a clean pocket, which is why when they play terrible football teams, they beat the hell out of those teams. If you can't pressure those quarterbacks, they're hanging 60 on you. All yes. right? But if you pressure them, they don't like it. They're really bad at adjusting to it. They're not accurate. They're not good. And they make terrible decisions over and over and over again. And I thought Michigan and Auburn could both pressure these young quarterbacks, and they did, which is why there's no way on earth you can put them over a Desmond Ritter. There's no way on earth you can put them over a Matt Corral, and I wouldn't put them over Kenny Pickett. And I don't blame you for that. I don't blame you for that at all. Absolutely. Looking at... Overall numbers here, Tank Bigsby, 29 attempts, 63 yards rushing. Uh, Brian Robinson went out late, so Alabama did not have him for the last, uh, we'll we'll say quarter, almost a a full fourth quarter, and then, of course, overtime. uh, Pulled a hamstring. Who knows what that's going to mean for next week because Alabama's already down multiple running backs for the season. So Trey Sanders was the guy, and they were having to work out Slade Bolden, the wide receiver, as a running back this week in practice. But Brian Robinson Jr., uh, 15 attempts, 64 yards rushing. Trey Sanders, 10 attempts for 23 yards. And then, of course, Bryce Young, 11 attempts for negative 23 yards. Some of those, of course, sacks. Seven of them, as a matter of fact, were sacks. The fact that it was only 23 or negative 23 rushing was kind of miraculous. He did have a couple of really long runs that he was able to scamper out of and, uh, and make something happen. But the going for two thing, I... I wonder about this because if T.J. Finley did not have a bum ankle and 
if they had shown any sign of promise on this. Like I think they're I think Harson's whole idea was we've seen Alabama make a bunch of mistakes early. We think that they'll make another mistake and all we got to do your, is stay in this own, and wait. Your only right? hope, your only hope because they had a backup kicker in this yeah. game that yeah. they couldn't have trusted. So your only hope was is we're going to go into overtime and we think we'll get a turnover. Like, cause that's well, not, not that's necessarily it. a turnover. Just like I, maybe they won't convert. Right. It's, it's, it's a crappy, yeah. crappy way to think. It, right. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you it was the wrong call because you have to look at your team, not just the team you're playing. You have to look at your team and you have to plan out. This is why you can't see six inches in front of your face and you have to see the entire forest. Yeah. You have to look out there in the ethos and you have to see if all right, so we scored. We saw them score and we saw them kick the extra point. So now you just scored and you've got to make this decision. You got to make it quick. Okay. But you have to start thinking about do I go for two or not? All right. So if I tie them, then I have to go first next time. And then and then in that going first, if I don't score, they kick a field goal, they win this thing. If I just get a field goal, they get a touchdown, they win this thing. You know, if we score and we can't get the two point conversion there, we, we're probably going to lose. Like th- there are too many scenarios for things to go wrong. You need way too many things to go right for you. Just kicking the extra point and prolonging the game. You're already beat up. You're already banged up. You, you know, it's go- the best case scenario for you is to get to the two point conversion round. Yeah. That's not, if you're, if that's your best case scenario, then take the two then and try to win it right there. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, 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 I was trying to explain what I thought they were they were doing, and and your point is exactly right. You have to take the chance. You had a genius two point conversion play call with the in the pocket, yeah, with the pass back over to the fullback or halfback or whatever you want yeah. to call him, the tight end slash. Why? Why are guy. you saving that for the two point conversion round? Like, why when not the take two point that, conversion wins it right there? Yeah, that's I, I did not understand why I didn't go for two at that point. I could somewhat understand why Alabama would not go for two when they scored that touchdown with 20-something seconds left because going to overtime, you feel like, all right, we've got the better team. We're rolling right now. We've got momentum, et cetera, et cetera, right? But with Auburn, it's like, okay, you are losing grip on this, and you have one play to be able to win this ball game. Why not just take it? Because the longer this goes, the better chance Alabama has to win. Why not just take the one shot? It's the only it's, answer. Yeah, it's, it's what I would have done. It's the only answer. Yeah, it's absolutely it's what answer. I would have done. So, so yes, the we'll move off of this one. We've still got plenty more to discuss. But uh, the Jordan Hare magic is still alive and well. It was not just a Gus Malzahn thing. The one-handed grabs and and all that that Auburn wide receivers were able to do. That And, and of course, the kicker that comes in that his longest in his career was 37 yards thus far. He had, he had missed one the game before that he just completely shanked. Like... Comes in and hits a forty nine yarder in overtime, that kind of stuff. It's like, okay, they, they, we we know what's going on. This is Jordan Hare during an Iron Bowl. There's a reason why Alabama was five and ten at Auburn in in the previous however many years because they they haven't always played it at Auburn, but uh, but Alabama has never been able to have consistent success playing on the road on the plains. Brian or Ben Herndon, Brian Denny has the atmosphere of a corporate board meeting. The fans aren't like Auburn fans. Uh, you, you are 100% right. A ball game at Auburn is a different experience. It's a completely different experience, and it was alive and well, and those fans were awesome on Saturday. It was a fun, fun ball game to watch. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.